Being alone doesn't have to mean being lonely, and if being alone scares you, that's probably just because you don't actually know the person that you're stuck being alone with. But luckily, we can fix that. If you don't know me, my name's Haley, and I'm your realistic and balanced bestie, helping you build a stronger brain and body. Today, we're talking about how to actually be comfortable being alone, which if you've ever tried to be alone, you know how uncomfortable it can feel sometimes. So to battle this, we are breaking it down into five simple steps to help you feel 100% comfortable being with yourself, to help you love your own company, and to help you enjoy being alone so much that you're going to prefer being alone over being with other people where it might be a forced connection. Before we get into it, please take a second to make sure that you are subscribed to my YouTube channel and following my podcast on Spotify because it really is so, so helpful. And be sure to check out the description below so that you can get a bunch of free goodies for your fitness and mindset journey. Now let's get into handling loneliness. Like I said, we are breaking this down into five steps and each step is going to have a task for you to complete so that you can really make sure that you're building on this and locking in all of those lessons that we learned. Step number one is to actually get to know yourself. And this can feel kind of dumb because we're sitting here like, okay, well, I'm in my head 24 seven. So I think I know who I am, but the voice in your head that you think, you know, might actually just be your ego. And our egos are that part of us that care so badly about what other people think. It's the part of you that's always beating you down and telling you what you did wrong. And it is always comparing you to other people. And when you've lived your whole life, listening to your ego, there comes a point where you're like, okay, well, if my ego's not me, then who the fuck is me? Because that's the voice that I know and that's what I'm always listening to. And there's a part of getting to know yourself that people don't really talk about and it's the fact that getting to know yourself really just means understanding your past traumas but also creating the person that you want to be. So getting to know yourself isn't really about figuring out who you are. It's more about creating who you want to be based on who you've been in the past. No one in the entire world magically turned into the person that they wanted to be their dream self just by getting to know yourself. And if they said that that's how they did it, they're lying. I'm sorry to break it to you. Getting to know yourself is really just about creating your dream self. And in order to do that, we do have to put in some hard work here. But the main key is to just get crystal clear on this person that you want to be. Who actually is your dream self? And I feel like I talk about this in almost every single video, but that's because that really is the center of so many things in the self-development kind of realm. So you really have to get clear on what you do for a job, what your hobbies are, who you're spending your time with, what does your life look like, what does your life feel like? And once you figure out those desires, then you can start to do the past trauma work, things like that, to figure out what's blocking you from becoming those things. But until you have an end goal here, you can't really start to break down the barriers that are stopping you from doing that because you don't have anything that it's blocking. You just have all of this trauma that's built up and it's just kind of piled up and there's nowhere for it to go because you don't have a direction to start to work in. So your task for this step is not only to get clear on who you wanna be, but that's gonna be a little bit more mental than anything else, but I also want you to do some journal prompts to try to figure out what could be blocking you from achieving the things that you wanna achieve. This might feel a little bit dumb to do, but I want you to think about it as important as getting to know someone that you're dating. So when you're dating someone, you wanna understand what their past trauma is. You wanna know if they've been cheated on. You wanna know what their family history is because you know that that's going to affect things in your future and you know it's things that you're going to have to learn to navigate around and you have to start treating yourself like that too you have to understand that the things that happened to you in the past are going to affect your future so you have to look at them from an outside perspective and see if you can kind of navigate those things and start to just unpack them a little bit step number two is to be your own bff and now that we know who we have been in the past and we know where we want to go now we can start to be besties with that bitch because we have an actual idea of who this person is that we actually are. And just the same as you get excited to check in with your besties or tell them when something good happens to you or even just get excited to hang out with them, you have to start treating your relationship with yourself the same exact way. I really struggled with this step when I got out of my first long-term relationship because I had just been so used to spending time with another person for so long. And that was really my first time having to figure out how to even be comfortable being alone and just get used to the idea of being alone in general. And I had been in a relationship where I was already kind of doing some inner work. I had taken some time to try to get to know myself, get to know some of my traumas, try to work through some things. And I had an idea of who I wanted to be. So I feel like I had a good foundation of who I actually was at this point in my life, but I didn't know how to get comfortable with that person. I didn't know how to enjoy spending time with this new person that I 
had no idea how to interact with. And it genuinely made me feel like when you're hanging out with someone who's maybe like a mutual friend or like somebody's acquaintance and you don't really know them that well and you're just kind of like stuck in a room together, maybe your mutual friends are like completely outside of the room and you and this other person are just sitting there like, making really awkward small talk and it's just like really weird and the vibes are not there at all. Like that's literally how I felt when I would try to spend time alone. I just felt so awkward and I felt like I was just kind of like, who the fuck is this bitch? Like why am I spending time with this girl that I don't even know? But you know that moment when you are stuck in a room with someone or you're stuck in a really awkward conversation and then you finally figure out that you have some kind of shared interest, whether it be maybe the same music, a same TV show, same hobby, whatever it is, you figure out that you have something to bond over and then it instantly switches the mood. It's like having a completely different conversation. And then it's like that switch just flipped and you're instantly like, oh my God, is this person my best friend? We are literally soulmates. That is exactly how it felt when I started spending my free time doing the things that I actually love. And at first it was really small things like just taking advantage of the fact that I could fully blast whatever music I wanted to listen to and belt it out at the top of my lungs. And then from there I was like, oh, I can start to rewatch this show that I used to love that maybe my ex hated. And you're slowly just reconnecting with yourself by finding old things that you either used to love to do or things that you've always wanted to try and you just never had the chance to try. So your task for this step is to really try to find those things. Try to figure out what hobbies you've been missing or what hobbies you just have never tried and you really just want to attempt to do it at least once and maybe you might find something that you absolutely love or you might just find more hobbies that you don't like which is just going to bring you closer to finding the things that you actually do like. I've talked about this before but when I was in this solo era post breakup I started baking and cooking more than I have ever done in my entire life and I'm not great at cooking or anything like that but it was genuinely so much fun because I could take that pressure off from having to be like, oh God, this might suck. Like, what if this doesn't turn out well? Like, it was just me. So it was okay if it sucked. It was okay if I completely burnt it and had to throw it away because no one's gonna yell at me. Nobody's mad at me. It's literally just me. And that goes for any hobby that you're gonna pick up during this time. And if you're a perfectionist, this is gonna be a little bit hard because I know when it comes to arts and crafty type things, I get super, super anal. I'm super perfectionistic about it and I want it to be absolutely like god tier work even if it's something that i've never done before so you really have to try to just remind yourself that you are doing this for fun you are just doing it to enjoy new things and try out stuff and just figure out what you actually like to do step number three is to take a look around you and by this i mean literally looking around and seeing what doesn't really align with the person that you want to be? Maybe your room was decorated in a way that you just don't really vibe with anymore, or you had a haircut that you've had for the last 10 years and you just don't really feel like it fits you anymore. Or maybe you realize that you hate all of your clothes because you were dressing in a certain way for validation and now you don't wanna do that anymore. A lot of times the reason that we don't feel comfortable being alone is because we just feel like we're a stranger in our own body, in our own environment, just wherever we are, we don't feel like we fit in because the things that are around us and the things that we've been doing don't align with that person that we wanna be. And now that we've taken the time to figure out what our goals are, our dreams are, and what our likes and dislikes are, we can really clearly see what things aren't aligning with us anymore. So that's gonna make this step a lot easier to follow because you already kind of have that foundation of seeing this person that you're creating and seeing what just doesn't fit with that ideal version of yourself. When I was in that solo era after my breakup, I finally took that time to dye my hair red after years of wanting to do it. I got rid of so many clothes during that time and I completely changed up my entire room, my entire space. I wanted everything to just feel like a completely new person. And I think this is one of the most freeing steps because you are literally getting rid of everything that is associated with that past version of yourself and you are stepping into a version of you that's actually gonna feel confident and comfortable with who you are because you're gonna be someone who you actually wanna be. So your task for this chapter is to pick one area of your life to start to revamp. And you can start super, super small. I highly recommend starting small, actually. So you might just revamp your beauty routine. Maybe you just clean out some of your clothes or even just reorganizing your room a little bit. The goal is to start small because we don't wanna get overwhelmed. Because at the end of the day, this is a lifelong relationship that you're building with yourself. So you don't have to overhaul everything overnight. You might even feel a little bit of imposter syndrome, if anything, if you start to completely try to 180 your life over 
overnight. So starting small and really make sure that every step that you're doing is actually connected to this version of you that you want to be. Step number four is to be your own partner. And like I said, we are working in levels here. So First, we had to nail being our own bestie, and now we can work on actually being our own partner. I think that this is the stage that most people think of when they think of loving yourself or dating yourself or being comfortable being alone. And I feel like the way that it's portrayed sometimes oversimplifies it a little bit. And it makes it seem so simplified that it almost feels impossible to do, which I guess is why I made this video. But I think it sucks because the idea of being your own partner can be really hard if you've only ever known toxic relationships or unhealthy patterns or seen really really bad relationships just in general around you so to actually show yourself love what you really have to do is figure out how to respect yourself first and I actually have a whole entire episode on loving yourself so if that's something that you really want to deep dive in I highly recommend checking that out after this but I am going to give you the bones of it right now so don't worry the biggest key to actually being in a successful relationship in general but especially in a relationship with yourself is respecting your time and honoring your feelings so whenever you are feeling lonely which is bound to happen because loneliness is just a human emotion there's really nothing wrong with it it's when we start spiral when we're in those lonely times that's when it becomes not so great but when you are lonely because again it's gonna happen you have to just learn to honor those feelings and kind of just validate them the same way that you would validate your partner or a friend or anyone in your life when they're going through something you're gonna just listen and you're gonna be like wow okay i'm so sorry you're feeling that you're just validating their emotions and you have to learn to do that for yourself too because once you can figure out how to start validating your own emotions you're not gonna be begging for it from every other person in your life so when those times do come and you are feeling lonely instead of beating yourself up and being like god I just did all this work to stop being lonely and I still feel lonely I'm so fucking stupid I can't believe I did this like how did I mess it up this bad I must have done something wrong I'm an idiot instead of doing that because you wouldn't want to date someone who's saying those things to you when you bring up your emotions so we're not going to do it to ourselves. so instead of beating yourself up you have to just sit there and kind of be like wow I'm so sorry that I'm feeling this like this does suck like I am allowed to feel these emotions. And whether you do that just in your own head or you take some time to journal it out, which I think is my preferred way of doing it just because it helps me kind of compartmentalize things a little bit better. But whichever way you choose to do it, just making sure that you are actually allowing yourself to feel emotions and not bottling them up and pushing them down and telling yourself that they're stupid and they don't matter and that nothing you feel is actually valid. And your task for this step is to figure out how to love yourself in your own love language. This was a really huge factor in that other episode that I did fully about loving yourself. But Figuring out if you like to receive love through physical touch, maybe gifts, words of affirmation, whatever it might be, figure out how to take that love language and show it fully to yourself. So for me, my love language is physical touch. So I might draw myself a nice bubble bath. I'm gonna get my comfiest pajamas. I might do a little face mask. Whatever your love language is, really just try to hone it in on yourself the same way that you would want a partner to do things for you. And in that same note, you also wanna try to figure out ways to really start to date yourself here. So actually penciling in on a calendar, going out on a date with yourself, whether it's something small like going to the movies or even just going to get your favorite coffee and coming straight home. Just making sure that you're actually penciling in time to spend with yourself and focusing on yourself during that time. So you wouldn't go on a date with somebody else and sit there on your phone the whole time and hunch over and be super, super awkward and scared. You would sit there and you would just enjoy being with this person and you would probably pull your shoulders back. You would try to feel a little bit more relaxed on this date and you would try to just be really present. And you have to try to do that when you are on these dates with yourself, no matter what it is. So even if you're just going to a coffee shop to sit there for maybe 10 minutes and then go straight home, don't go into that coffee shop, hunch over, be sitting on your phone the whole time, be just like texting, scrolling on TikTok, whatever, and refusing to make eye contact with anybody because you feel uncomfortable. No, just sit there and people watch if you have to, or just kind of sit there and be in your own little world. Again, the goal is to really figure out how to respect yourself, and you're gonna respect yourself a hell of a lot more if you can actually be present with yourself and take time to just honor you doing whatever you want to do. And step number five is to really analyze your friends. And now at this point, you might be so comfortable being alone that you find yourself turning down plans just to stay at home and just to be alone. And this might make you a little bit scared and it might make you want to just jump back into hanging out with people again because you're like, oh my God, I can't believe I've been alone so much. I need external validation. But I want you to try to fight the urge to just jumping back into hanging out with people and really ask yourself, 
are these friends aligned with that person that I want to be? Are these people that I actually can see benefiting me or are they just people that I was using to fill some kind of void or distract me or just give me something to do with my time? And try to think, do I feel lonely when I hang out with these people? Because you don't have to be alone to feel lonely. You can feel lonely in a giant group of people if they're people that just aren't aligned with you. And a lot of times that loneliness that we feel when we are in a big group of people comes from the fact that we might be in this weird middle ground. We're kind of in a limbo. When you're getting closer to being that person that you really see yourself becoming your ideal self, but you haven't fully left behind the previous version of you that you were, and maybe your friends were really aligned to this previous version of you, and now you're kind of in this middle zone, so you know that these friends aren't people that are either going to support you or be there for you or help you on this journey to being your higher self, but you can't let go of them yet. You're still there. So you're kind of in this internal battle where you're kind of just in between lives here, and that doesn't mean that the people who were in your past and people that used to be best friends with you aren't going to eventually come up on the same journey as you but you guys just might be at different places at different times and that's okay that's completely normal but if you think about it like this when you imagine your dream self that version of you probably has friends and people around them that are on the same path as them have the same values as them and are just kind of helping them towards those goals so if you're not aligned to this version of yourself yet then you also aren't going to have the friends that are aligned to this version of you yet either and this isn't to say you should cut off all your friends if you're experiencing loneliness when you're hanging out around them but it is to say just start to observe a little bit more see if the people that are around you are actually people that you do see coming on this journey with you and that you do see supporting you as you get higher up towards your dream self and as you kind of evolve into the person that you want to be and if for some reason you do think okay no one that I am surrounded with is actually going to come on this journey with me then try to just take comfort in the fact that you might have to take a little bit of time away from people and a little bit of time alone but you should know that the people that are going to align with you are going to be on the way because they are looking for this version of you to be friends with, just like you are looking for them to be friends with this version of you that you are aligning to. So your task for this chapter is to really just observe the people that you are surrounding yourself with. And if they aren't people that you see yourself coming on this journey with, or people that you just don't see aligning with that version of yourself, then maybe taking some time away from them, changing the frequency that you see them, or even just changing the environment that you see them in. Because sometimes we might have a really great friend, but if we're only seeing them when we're partying every single weekend, and you're not going to build a really great bond with them or a great relationship and you might not see them as someone who's going to support you on this journey but if you started to see them out for coffee once a week instead of partying every single weekend you might start to realize oh this person actually is someone that I could see being in my life for a long time I just wasn't vibing with the way that we were spending time together in the past and for those of you who don't have a group of people around you to observe and see if they're worth it then your task for this chapter is to start to try to find places that you think that you might meet the group of friends that is going to be aligned with you. So if you see your future self going to workout classes every single weekend, start putting yourself into those situations so that you can start to meet the people that you think might be aligned with this higher version of yourself. The goal with all of this is not to never ever feel lonely ever again. It's just to be so comfortable and so content with yourself that the feeling of loneliness is going to come and just kind of pass right through you whenever it does occur. The biggest thing to remember is that you are more than capable of building a really beautiful relationship with yourself and using that relationship to really build yourself into your ideal version of you. And I really hope that all of these steps are the thing that jumpstart you onto that path to becoming your dream self. If you feel like these steps gave you any kind of breakthrough at all, please let me know by either commenting or sending me a DM on Instagram at Haley Linnae. And as always, if you are looking to further your fitness and mindset journey, you can get two weeks free of my app, Duality, in the description below. And when you join the app, I will send you a lovely little thank you message personally because I wanna get to know everybody who's on my app. But that is all that I have for you today. So until next time, be kind to your mind, to your body, and to others, and happy healing.